Hi everybody, this is Julian from Hugging Face. A few weeks ago, I noticed that uh, AWS added a new built-in algo to Amazon SageMaker. And this algo is called Tab Transformer. So of course, that got me interested, you know, SageMaker, Transformers, these are my obsessions. So I had to take a look. And so in this video, we're gonna run a training job on this Tab Transformer algo. And we're going to try and look uh, under the hood to see what this is really made of. Okay, let's get to work. Starting from the AWS documentation, we see that the tab transformer algo has a really good name because it's a transformer based model and it's applied to categorical features. So tabular data. So finally, AWS managed to name something, right? Yeah, now it makes sense. So looking at uh, the details here, um, we can see you know, some code and how to use this as a built-in algo. And I'm sure we'll jump to uh, one of the notebooks in a second. Uh, there's an example for tabular classification and another one for tabular regression. Okay, and then some additional information we need to have CSV data for training and inference. Okay, and yeah, that's about it. So that's definitely interesting. I'm, I'm really curious how uh, you can use um, transformers with tabular data. Of course, we're all familiar with transformers for NLP and, and computer vision and more, but you know, tabular data is relatively new. Uh, if you're interested in the details, there is a link to the archive paper. And we can see that here. Let's quickly take a look. All right. Okay, so this is an Amazon algo. And funny enough, authors are listed at Amazon AWS OC. Confusing naming, but okay, I'll stop there. I work for Amazon AWS. Uh, okay, anyway. All right, so, you know, it's, it's, it's a good read. I, I, I went through it. It's not too crazy. And you can see, you know, categorical features uh, being embedded and, and, you know, numerical features being normalized, etc., etc. Okay, so if, if that's your thing, you can go and the, then gets a little uh, mathy, but yeah. They tested it on, a, on a, a whole bunch of tabular data sets. So that's interesting. You get some, some interesting, uh, interesting numbers, uh, et cetera, et cetera. Okay. And, and that algo does reasonably well compared to, uh, to other, uh, other classification and regression algos. Okay. So interesting algo, you can go read the paper and uh, now let's, let's run some code. So I started from um the uh, regression example but you know for what it's worth you can go and try the classification example as well um and the beginning is really you know SageMaker as we know it so a little bit of setup and in this example they use the abalone data set um which you know which is a toy data set but then again we really don't uh, care here we just want to see how this works and the abalone is, uh, is a shellfish, and uh, the name of the game is to try and predict the age of that shellfish based on um, age features, which are physical measurements, length, diameter, etc. Yeah, I'm, I'm sure you've played with this data set before. Okay. All right. Um, so, yeah, we need to grab the container for this built-in algo, um, and this says PyTorch. <laughs> so at least we know it's based on PyTorch. We'll find out a little more, okay? And we set some training parameters, where's the data set, et cetera, et cetera. Um, and, and that's all uh, available to us directly. Okay, no problem there. And the notebook can optionally run um, automatic model tuning to optimize hyperparameters. 
Um, by default, it's on, but you know, I turned it off here um, because I just wanted to run one training job and and see what was going on there. But yeah, feel free to uh, feel free to tweak a little more if you like. And then we, of course, create the estimator, the cornerstone of any SageMaker script. And as this is a built-in algo, we use the uh, generic estimator. We pass the name of the container, etc., uh, etc. Cetera, et cetera. The rest is not super interesting. This got my attention. Um, the entry point is a script called transferlearning.py. And typically, uh, built-in algos uh, don't do that. Uh, built-in algos kind of have their, uh, uh, you know, uh, entry point hard coded. So uh, you know, we'll we'll take a look at this script. See um, see what what's in there. Okay, and yeah, we disable automatic model tuning, and then we call fit, and training starts. Okay. And, you know, usually we don't read the log, but this time we're going to take a look. So it does install a whole bunch of things. One thing it does not install is the Transformers library. So let's find out what's actually installed in there. Uh, we see Torch, okay, because obviously this is a Torch algo. Blah, 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 blah. Installing more stuff. And there we go. Okay. PyTorch wide deep. Okay, so that probably rings a bell. And if it doesn't, uh, you can actually go and check it out on um, on GitHub. Um, this is a, an interesting open source project that lets you build um, transformer-based models for... Um, and in fact, deep learning models for tabular data. Okay, so pretty pretty interesting. And um, yeah, we can see there's one uh, called Deep Tabular. Okay, so I think the the plot thickens. Okay, interesting library. Uh, check it out. So that's probably what's running under the hood here. Okay, so it does install all that stuff. Um, we see some hyperparameters. We see the number of um, transformer blocks, etc., cetera, etc. Cetera. Let's keep reading. Ah, module dear, that's interesting because that's uh, it's kind of the uh, a package with the uh, the dependencies and any additional source code. So that's probably where we're going to find that training script. Okay. So we can go and grab that stuff afterwards and uh, and check it out. Okay, uh, what else? Blah 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 blah. Okay, and then the training training code, the training log, which goes on forever. And yeah, we are not super interested in that. We just want a model that we can look at. Okay, for the record, this was reasonably fast. I trained for two three minutes. Let's go on to the end and see how long. Yeah, a little under three minutes. And uh, and interestingly, this was not trained on GPU. It was trained on an M5, so a CPU-based instance. So, yeah, it, um, which I guess was one of my early questions on, yes, okay, transformers for tabular data, that could be interesting. But, um, you know, do I have to pay the, the GPU tax and train for, you know, 30 minutes on a GPU where I could train for, you know, I guess uh, five minutes on, uh, I could train XJBoost or something for a few minutes on CPU. So apparently you can train um, this thing on, on CPU for a few minutes. And uh, and I guess the, the, the cost would be kind of comparable to, um, to traditional algos okay at least not totally insanely different okay uh so the rest of the notebook goes and deploys the um, the, the model but you know that's not what i'm interested in here but feel free to run that and and uh, and evaluate the algo etc cetera, etc cetera. here i just want to find out uh what's going on so the, the first thing i'm going to do is go and actually grab that uh that script and um and this is how you do it. You just go and uh, 
yeah, you just go and copy that source deer tar gz thing, extract it, and inside of it there is that transfer learning dot py script. Um, and obviously, yes, it's all based on PyTorch Y Deep. Okay. So let's take a look at the code. So there's some data loading here, which is not fascinating. Uh, and of course, we use script mode so we can see all the training parameters passed as command line arguments, the usual stuff. Okay. And then, yeah, there's a little bit of column manipulation, categorical and continuous label uh, column names, preparing data and feeding it to the mod to feed it to the model. Because obviously we need to set the number of columns, right? So how many um, categorical columns do we have and how many um, numerical columns do we have? And then we call fit and yeah, the usual stuff, right? Okay, so we use that tab transformer object from uh, from PyTorch Y Deep, which we certainly see referenced here. Um, let's keep going a little bit. Yeah, tab transformer here it is, and it's the same research paper. Okay, so that's that's how they do it. They use the, the built-in implementation in PyTorch YD. Okay, anything else worth looking at here? Uh, nah. Saving the model and yeah, the usual stuff. Okay, so okay, so that answers the question on where does the model come from? So it's the um, it's the tab transformer implementation in PyTorch Y Deep, which you could use out of the box um, on, on your own machine with the, the vanilla library. Um, so I guess what they did here is really, you know, wrap that stuff around um, a training script that runs on SageMaker, okay? And that kind of saves you the trouble of, uh, you know, writing that uh, uh, data preparation code and, 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 and training that at scale. Um, when it comes to instances, I actually noticed that you could run this thing on GPU. I think it says that somewhere. Yep. So you can do single instance CPU and single instance GPU. And multi-GPU training is not supported. Okay. But unless you had a ton of data, you know, that's probably not a, a big deal. Okay, so now we know about the training script and obviously if you wanted to you could tweak that thing you could uh you know you could copy paste that script and uh and tweak it in uh, any way you'd like and of course you would use your own script instead of the one that's provided here okay so instead of calling that uh, transfer learning uh, entry point uh, you would just pass your own script in the estimator okay why not could do that Okay, um, so now let's take a look at the model. So uh, we can look at the output location for that job. Uh, we can list the whole thing. And sure enough, there is the model artifact. Model.r.jz. Okay, cool. Um, and lots of profiler stuff because that's enabled by default, which for the record, I think is annoying. Uh, but, you know, no, no one's listening, so... Uh, you could actually disable it in the uh, in the estimator, and you could just go and extract the model. We see the model parameters, so we see we have thirty two dimensions here, um, certainly corresponding to the uh, uh, the pre processed uh, columns, and we have four blocks and of course if we load the model as a pytorch model and we print the name of the layers yeah we see the four blocks block zero block one block two block three okay and then uh yeah some mlp at the end okay so uh, yeah that kind of answers my uh <laughs> curiosity i think 
And, you know, I was wondering what that uh, interesting model uh, uh, actually is and, and where it comes from. So pretty, yeah, pretty consistent, uh, pretty, pretty clear. We have the, the research article. Uh, we have the, the implementation in uh, PyTorch YDeep. And all that stuff is wrapped around um, a, a built-in container and a, a built-in training script in um, in SageMaker. Um, so that's that's pretty pretty interesting. Um, I'm still not totally sure why they call it transfer learning because this is, as far as I can tell, um, this is not transfer learning. But feel free to disagree. Uh, this is uh, pre-training, right? Or I guess initial training. Uh, in the in the paper, there's a very interesting part where they actually uh, discuss how you could use transfer learning with this. So, if you had um, a ton of unlabeled data, so let's say for classification, right? If you have a ton of unlabeled data, you could do pre-training using uh, something similar to mask language modeling for NLP. You could actually randomly mask uh, some columns, right? And, um, and train the, the model on predicting that. So that's pretty cool. And then you could just do fine tuning with a little bit of uh, label data. So um, yeah, that's an interesting technique. Uh, it's, not, it's not available here. Um, yeah, maybe, maybe later, maybe somebody will, uh, will come up with a notebook to show how to do that. I think that would be super useful, actually. You know, if you had, you know, a million, um, a million customer, uh, transactions or something, um, and you could pre-train on those and then just label, you know, a couple hundred or, you know, I don't know, maybe 1000 and, uh, and get to really, really good accuracy by just labeling a thousand, uh, um, instances instead of a whole bunch. Uh, that that'd be cool, right? I'd be interested in seeing that. So anybody at AWS wants to build this, uh, I'd love to. I'd love to promote it. Uh, but yeah, details in the in the paper. All right. Well, that's pretty much what I wanted to tell you. I think the last thing I should mention is, of course, um, although this particular algo is not um, is not available on the hub. And, you know, again, if somebody wants to add it, you know, just go and go and do that. Um, but there is a tab transformer implementation in Keras. Thanks to my, uh, to my DevRel colleagues. Well done. And the community. And uh, so there's a space where you can actually demo a version um, trained on the on the adult data set that predicts if a, a particular person earns more than 50k dollars or not um, and the model is actually here it's uh it's available on the hub so different implementation because this one is uh, is obviously uh, a keras model but this comes from the same place so full credit goes to khalid salama so full credit goes to you my friend and uh, and there's actually a very good example on the Keras uh, documentation uh, on uh, on how to work with this. Okay, so there you go. Transformers are coming from tabular data, and so it looks like we have a bunch of options to do that. And I'm sure we'll see more models on on how to do this. Okay, well that's it for today. Uh, I hope you learned a few things, and I'll see you soon, maybe on the road. Bye bye.